Hi there. I'm Lou Gallagher. I'm Corvette Ronnie. And welcome to another episode of Men Are So Smart. And we've been covering the very latest on the Forest Fen treasure, Ronnie. Uh, bring us up to speed with uh, where we are at this point. So we do know that uh, Forrest Fenn, he's a uh, former Vietnam fighter pilot and an art dealer. He's buried a treasure in the roughly 1,000 square miles between Santa Fe, New Mexico and the Canadian border. Mm -hmm. Maybe a treasure chest worth millions. Oh, it is indeed worth millions. Yep. Uh, and uh, he hit it back in 2010. Mm -hmm. So now, and there are as many as 350,000 people looking for this treasure. 350,002. <clears> That's right. Count <laughs> us. <laughs> so they've gone hunting for this treasure, and there really is, and we'll go into this a little further in depth, but there really is no way of knowing whether anyone has really gotten close, and some say it may not be found for a thousand years, Ron. Forrest Fenn himself said that. Mm -hmm. uh, he says, no one knows where that treasure chest is but me. If I die tomorrow, the knowledge of that location goes in the coffin with me. Now, the main piece of guidance Fenn has offered is this, as you know, cryptic 24-line poem he wrote in his self-published memoir called The Thrill of the Chase. He has uh, shared that poem on Instagram, Ronnie, give, give us a few lines here for those that are not aware. Welcome to the, the chase. Okay. Begin it where warm waters halt. Okay. And take it in the canyon down. Uh-huh. Not far. Okay. But too far to walk. Put in below the home of Brown. Now, what we know about this particular stanza is he parked and then made two trips to this location. Right. So we've learned that when he says, begin it where warm waters halt, we believe that's where he parked his vehicle, and then he takes it in the canyon down to the home of Brown. When asked about the home of Brown, he, what, did he, what did he say? He, he basically he wasn't willing to give it up uh, because that would... Put too many people in the right starting location. Okay, so now uh, <clears throat> it goes on. From there, it is no place for the meek. The end is ever drawing nigh. There be no paddle up your creek, just heavy loads and water high. So some are saying this treasure is wet, but I don't believe that to be true. Next stanza, Ronnie. Oh, do you have it? Uh, mm -hmm. No. Yeah, you do. Well, okay. Where are we? If you've been wise oh, and yeah. found the blaze, look quickly <clears throat> down. Look quickly down. Your quest to cease. But tarry scant with marvel gaze. Just take the chest and go in peace. Now, what I've been reading is that Marvel refers to the comic book series. Oh, wow. And there are some superhero things involved in this. You can do a little more research and find that yourself. So, Ronnie, now you're uh, up. Uh, so, why is it that I must go and have my... Oh, leave my trove. And leave my trove for all to seek? The answer I already know I've done is tired and now I'm weak. So hear me all and listen good. I love that. <laughs> Your effort will be worth the cold. If you are brave and in the wood, I give you title to the gold. Man, mm. to be the person that finds this. Uh, and on Instagram he says, all of the information you need to find the treasure is in the poem. The chapters in my book have very subtle hints, but are not deliberately placed to aid the seeker. Good luck in the search, Forrest Finn. Um, so the it's very, it's kind of a little cryptic. Yeah, this is, or, or, is this the ramblings of a very old man? 
Now, if he buried this treasure as when he said he did, uh, he was in his 70s. It would have been about 70s. Yeah. So, eight, um, and, and we've, uh, in, in previous episodes, which you'll see pop up, um, we've mentioned that he, he wasn't going to be able to take it to a place where he was going to be climbing mountain peaks and, right. uh, you know, swimming across rivers and such. He was a 70-year-old man, friend, so... And the reason he's saying that is because several people have died already looking for it. Four that we know of. Yeah, um, so, you know, climbing up something or down something yeah. and uh, met, have met their demise. Yeah, so. and you, we talked about it in the last update that we did, and that, that will now pop up for you so that you can uh, watch that episode. Read the clues in my poem over and over and study maps of the Rocky Mountains. Try to marry the two. The treasure is out there waiting for the person who can make all the lines cross in the right spot. Hmm. Uh, he goes on to say the chest is nearly a square foot in size and weighs 40 pounds when full. Mm -hmm. That's two trips. Yeah, yes, exactly. Uh, supposedly contain emeralds, rubies, gold coins, and diamonds, all artifacts that Sven, a self-taught uh, archaeologist, amassed during his own sometimes controversial explorations in the southwest uh the millionaire was criticized in the 90s for ex excavating the san lazaro pueblo indian site he bought for example and the fbi searched his home in 2009 in connection with the sale of artifacts looted from the four corners area although no charges were filed fen originally filed or filled the chest after he was diagnosed with cancer in 1988 he planned to drag it into the mountains to die beside it after he survived cancer, he left He left it in a walk-in vault at his house for years where a couple of witnesses confirmed that they saw it filled to the brim with valuables. So he decided to hide it and launch the hunt years later during the Great Recession. Lots of people were losing their jobs, despair was written all over the headlines, and I just wanted to give some people hope, he told the ABC News. So what are some of the treasure hunters saying? Well, some are obsessive. Quote, most of my 12 hours every night, I'm on Google or something looking up clues, Ricky Idlet, a steamboat operator in Mississippi, told the source. Every night, every night I'm looking. There are a number of online forums where enthusiasts trade theories about where the treasure might be, including an entire subreddit called Finding Fens Gold that's devoted to the cause. Now, Ronnie, um, we've done several episodes on this. And I wanted to talk to um, our viewers and, and answer, if we can, some of these questions that we're getting here. Okay, so uh, this is the most recent comment that we received. It's from the flip side of Forest Fen's treasure hunt. And it says, hey guys, great show. And yes, there is way too much information out there, all of which only inhibits confirmation. I have done a couple of videos which discuss this and he gives us a link to that. You can find it um, uh, on our comments page. Uh, David Cooper says, uh, Hi guys, can you tell me where I can find the article on the pro team, please? Thank you. Uh, thank you for your, your comment, David Cooper. Uh, we talked about that in the last episode, Ronnie. Right. That a uh, pro team was put in place to try to narrow this down. There are so many things that are going on and with losing people who are hunting for this treasure that uh, some say he should call off the search. He's not willing to do that. Uh, and in fact, he feels like it puts more people out there hiking in the wild, which mm -hmm. he thinks is kind of a, a noble thing to do. It's funny, though, that sometimes you get too much information out there and it kind of clouds probably what's really important. And I think that's kind of what's happening is there's just enough fake news yeah. throwing people off the trail just a little bit. And you don't have to be thrown off very far to completely ruin your chances of finding this. Uh, next comment comes from P.T. Garner 1. And P.T. says, reading some of the comments below, it is always fun to go back to 2014 and 15 and read of all the people saying they're 100% sure of its location, they will be leaving as soon as the snow melts, <laughs> their <laughs> vacation comes up, etc. Yet, here we still are. I hope it will be found. 
Some of these locations must be suffering terrible wear due to the unreal number of people running to the same places year after year after year. Thank you for your comment. We, we really did enjoy that one. You uh, know, I, I'm not sure you can wear out a desert. <laughs> so Well, there's, you know, the Rocky Mountains are, I mean, when I think about it, yeah, sure, it's very cold, but I mean, it's a long range of mountains and yes. it covers geographically so many different climates, I would assume, that there's got to be areas where there are warm waters. Uh, let's see, good show. This is from Sledneck. Good show, guys. Forrest Fenn gets email from searchers. Oh, this is about a question that we raised in a previous episode, which was, how does Forrest Fenn know that people have been within 500 feet That's right. or 200 feet? And Sledneck says, uh, people send him emails that show pictures and tell him the general area they are in. That is how he knows. So he says. So we know that people have been close. I mean, he says as close as maybe 200 feet. Yeah. That's... That's close. That's but, close to millions. But, you know, I mean... But he's not telling who right. is within 200 feet. I, I, he gets hundreds of emails every day. Right. And I'm sure there are pictures attached to almost every one of them. And then he goes through and says, one of these pictures is close today. Yeah. Just to kind of, you know, throw a little bit more intrigue in there. A little gasoline on the fire, you yeah, mean? Yeah. Okay, this one I think is for you, Ronnie. Uh, still have not seen that episode uh, from Sledneck. Uh, still have not seen that episode of Longmire, but I want to. Not too worried about the pro team. We all have a chance. Tell your wives not to worry. <laughs> Statistically, the most dangerous part of the chase is the drive there. <laughs> Very nice. Thank so in you. in Longmire, uh, I believe it's it's episode. I mean, it's, it's season five. Mm -hmm. So you may not have gotten quite that far yet. And I think I read it was episode seven. Uh huh. And then I'm on season six now. Okay. And I believe it was one of the very first episodes of season six. So maybe one or two of season six. They go back and they, they talk about it again. Uh -huh. And they show an encampment of maybe, I don't know, 100 people all hunting for this. Obviously, Finn's treasure, you know, it's a... Similarity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's it's very, very close to Finn's treasure. Uh-huh. But, uh, yeah, it's, it's interesting that they pay tribute to it in this show. M.M.O. Nerd says, The person who solved it has been known since last summer. Hold on. Mm. It is a single person with a partner. Aha. <laughs> I see. Sounds like my, my marriage. Sounds reasonable. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, really. Uh, it is not a team and is not someone on the blogs. It will be over when the snow melts in the state of Wyoming and Montana. Well, I wrote back, I guess we'll have to wait and find out. It would seem to me that most of the snow should be melting as we speak. And the nerd says, not where the chest is. Oh. And I said, wouldn't you agree then that this is all still speculative? He said, no. Well, sounds like he knows. Uh, I said, until a person sends the proof to Forrest Fenn. Right. A photo with a chest. Yeah. With the chest. It remains unclaimed. Yeah. He says he will gladly call off the hunt when he receives the evidence. However, he has yet to do that. Uh, or maybe, just maybe, somebody stumbled onto it not knowing what it was, and they're somewhere on the beach <laughs> drinking Mai Tais <laughs> kicking it for the rest of their life. Yeah, well, I can see that. Um, Emma Manonert says, says uh, he tells you where it is in the book, and no, not Yellowstone. Oh. oh, well, that's helpful. MMO nerd seems to know what's going on. However, David Paisano, really, <laughs> says, you are partially correct. We've got a lot of people weighing in on this, Ron. Ooh. And so I said, please explain, David. He says, he tells you where it is in the book. Right. Mm -hmm. When someone finds the treasure, though, it will, for all intents and purposes, be out of his hands. True enough. Yeah. Nobody has to say they found it. No. I mean, you know, it's like that lady who won the lottery and didn't want to give up her real name. Right. Uh, for a lot of reasons. And the only thing I would think about is, you know, you'd have to off that jewelry somehow. Right? 
Yeah. And there, if it's that valuable, there have to be some record of that. Well, there's going to be questions. About For sure. You, about, you would think. Yeah. You can't just take it to uh, Pawn Stars and uh, start selling the stuff there. Uh, it is. It's going to be... I, w I would guess that once you send the picture of the chest to Forrest Fenn, he'll probably then take care of part of that uh, part of that issue for you. So I'm sure he has collectors and dealers that would be more than thrilled. Uh, David Cooper says, at MMO Nerd, could you elaborate a bit more, please? <laughs> and David Paisano says, start with the cover page. Here's one I really like, and I think this is for you, Ronnie. These are smart men. God help us all. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> I, I wrote back. <clears throat> thanks for that. Was from Dirk the Daring, by the way. <laughs> thanks. Dirk. And I said, thanks for watching, Dirk, and thanks for being such a big fan. <laughs> yeah. You rock. Here's hoping God helps you too. <laughs> See, we actually do reply to our comments, <laughs> Ronnie. Yep. Uh, and, and then there's a, a few more, welcome to the chase and that sort of thing. But here's what we're learning as we're covering this story and doing our research. There are a lot of people that believe that the treasure has been found. However, conversely, there are an equal amount of people, if not greater, that feel that it hasn't been. That's the side I'm on. Mm -hmm. And I think that I am too because of the fact that... As I mentioned, Forrest Fenn has not called off the search. Right. So, and I, I would be willing to bet, I don't know what his health is at this point. I've seen some videos, but, um, you know, he's, he's getting up there. Well, there's no real incentive for him to not call it off. Right. Once it's found. Yeah. What's there? There's nothing in it for him at that point. It's mm -hmm. been found. Actually, that would be uh, a pretty big boost, I would think, in, well, Obviously, the sale of his books would plummet. Um, Good point, Ronnie. Good point. So there Always is, follow the money. Yeah. So there is that. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think we were saying that his book costs 80, uh, like uh, 80 bucks, somewhere uh, $89, there. $89, I think it was. All so, right. So uh, look, now we come to you and we say, if you'd like to weigh in on this, please do below in the comment section. And Ronnie and I will sp spend extra time this week commenting on your comments and getting back to you. Uh, we, we do it rather promptly, too. So your questions, your comments, suggestions, whatever it might be, we'll continue that below, and we will continue to bring you the very latest that we can find on the Fen Treasure. That'll do it for another episode of Men Are So Smart. We yep. hope you'll subscribe to our show. It's very easy to do, and it doesn't cost a dime. It is truly important to us, so we thank you in advance. And you might make millions following the show. Yeah. How about that? We're, we just gave you the clues from yeah. the poem, so yeah. we're trying to be helpful. Yeah. And uh, we want to be um, in touch with you. I'm Lou Gallagher. I'm Corvette Ronnie. And we will see you on the next episode of Men Are So Smart. Bye. <laughs>